Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya'i wal mursalin sayyidina wa habibina wa syafi'ina wa nuri qulubina wa qurrati a'yunina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Innaman ta'allama wa ta'lim wa tadhakkura wa tadhkir wa naf'a wa intifa' wa ifrada wa istifada wa lahatha ala tamassuki bi kitabillahi wa sunnati rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa du'a ila al-fuda wa dalalata ala al-khair ibtigha'a wajhillah wa mardatihi wa qurbihi wa thawabihi subhanahu wa ta'ala ma'a lutfin wa afiyatin bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin Allahumma inna nas'aluka 'ilman ladunni wa rasyaba sofiyan hani ya wahhab ya ghani Allahumma inna nas'aluka 'ilman ladunni wa rasyaba sofiyan hani ya wahhab ya ghani Allahumma inna nas'aluka 'ilman ladunni wa rasyaba sofiyan hani ya wahhab ya ghani اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد المأمون على علم المأمون والفهم المكنون من سر الكافي والنون وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وارزقنا اللهم نصيبا وافرا من سر قولك إنما أمره إذا أرواد شيئا أن يقول له كفا يكون اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد المأمون على العلم المضمون والفهم المكنون من سر الكافي والنون وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سلم وارزقنا اللهم نصيبا وافرا من سر قولك انما امره اذا اراد الشيء ان يقول له كن فيكن اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد المؤمن على العلم المضمون والفهم المكنون من سر الكافي والنن وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم وارزقنا اللهم نصيبا وافرا من سر قولك انما امره اذا اراد شيئا ان يقول له كن فيكن اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد المكن على العلم المضمون والفهم المكن من سر الكافي والنن وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم وارزقنا اللهم نصيبا وافرا من سر قولك إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكن اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد المأمون على العلم المضمون والفهم المكنون من سر الكافي والنون وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وارزقنا اللهم نشيبا وافرا من سر قولك إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكن اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد المؤمن على العلم المؤمن والفهم المكن من سر الكافي والنون وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وارزقنا اللهم نشيبا وافرا من سر قولك إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كفا يكون اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد المأمون على العلم المضمون والفهم المكنون من سر الكافي والنون وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وارزقنا اللهم نصيبا وافرا من سر قولك إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كفا يكون اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد المأمون على العلم المضمون والفهم المكنون من سر الكافي والنون وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وارزقنا اللهم نشيبا وافرا من سر قولك إنما إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكن اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد المأمن على العلم المضمون والفهم المكن من سر الكافي والنن وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وارزقنا اللهم نشيبا وافرا من سر قولك إنما أمر
Alhamdulillah. Bismillah. Okay, so we were at the um dars al-awwal, the first lesson, right? And we are um at the end of it. Right, so I think I went through yes, um my mark is there. Right, so I think I went through right where um it is mentioned here. Right. So we're at the point whereby um he went through the, we have finished we have finished going to the, the hadith right first time around and we keep going back to this hadith over and over again, right? Because this hadith is a core hadith, right, for us to understand the signs of the end of times. Right. So inshallah. Um and uh alhamdulillah. Right. So he says here um wa you ala mumin siyaqi hala hadithi and na akra arkana din uh arba. وهي التي أكدها قوله صلى الله عليه وسلم فإنه جبريل أتاكم يعلمكم أمر دينكم. Right, so at this part, so so here, right, we have the last part, right, um, at the end of the hadith, whereby it says that so it's it's known that from 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 this hadith, it cannot be denied. Right, it really cannot be denied. There's no other way to explain this. Right, but rather than to say, right, there's no other way to explain this than to say that there are indeed four. Um, you know, for for um integrals or for principles for for for, for pillars right, of this religion, and not three. Right, there are four. Right, but again, you know, the on Habib 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 Abu Ghari will actually um divide them into two parts. Whereby you have the thawabit and you have the mutaqirat. Right, which is you have the you have the pillars of religion that are firm, right, and unchanging throughout time, and then you have the pillars that are um you have the one pillar right that is um changing and and to be and it is it is definitely you know subject to the interpretation of the time. You know, mashallah. And may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala give us understanding. Okay. Uh. <clears throat> right, so um, so now we're going to the second part where he brings another proof, right? Because of course, with everything in our religion, there has to be, especially something as big as saying, you know, a fourth pillar in the religion, there has to be proof from the Quran, of course. Right? There has to be proof from the hadith and also proof um from the Quran. Right? Of course, not everything, you know, some, some people they think that every single thing is in the Quran. <laughs> right? It's not that every single thing in our religion is in the Quran, of course not. Right? The Quran is a book right, of guidance, right? And a book whereby Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala points us right to methods in our religion, right? But you know, you don't find every single tiny detail in the Quran, of course not. Right. Um that does that would that would make the book really lengthy and um you say, uh, you said, you know, it is uh, a lot of things will be in there will be unnecessary for people to read, right? So, Allah, so Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is divine wisdom, right? He has given us the Quran in a way that is it is concise, and right? the Quran is concise, and then matters that needs expanding, where right? we find it in the um in the words of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Alhamdulillah. Right, so so something as so what, but whatever is core in our religion, you will and you must find it in the Quran. Right, you will and you must find it in the Quran. Whatever is core in our religion, so here, um, so so now that he's bringing forward the the you know the um his you know his his uh you say his um realization. I won't I won't call it discovery. I won't call it a a claim, but it's a realization. It's actually a realization that there are actually four components. To this one. Okay, so there are four components in our religion as he has, you know, he's his um he's he is um realizing this, right? So he looks into the Quran, and in fact, you find many verses, not just one verse, but many, you know, types of several times in the Quran when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the religion. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about you know the, the the components of the religion every single time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually speaks about four components. <laughs> he actually speaks about he actually speaks about four components, right? But all the while, right, we have been seeing it as three. But if you look closely, you find four. Right. So here he says here, um al-arkan uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala min right? So and and so another confirmation. Right, another confirmation, right? That there are four components in this religion, right? Of course, you see, the, he begins his book, you know, Habib Abu Bakr Adani, he has to begin his book, you know, giving very strong proofs that there are four components before he can even speak about the fourth component. Because if you don't believe that this matter, you know, or this um, component, this last, you know, pillar, right, is a pillar, you won't, you won't give it its due and you won't place it 
at its position that it needs to be placed at in that it is one of the rukun, one of the pillars, one of the integrals of the religion. You understand that? That's why he's driving this very strongly right, to people because the next chapter brings us there. The next chapter, he actually, he actually tells us that once you realize this, right, so you follow the discussion, right, once you realize this, this goes into now, what is it on you with regards to this pillar, with regards to this last component of the religion that has not been given, you know, um, enough time and enough study, enough you know, enough exploration in it, right? And in enough, um, you say spread to the masses, you know, Subhanallah, right? So, so that's why he's he's doing this, you know, from the big from the beginning, right? Because whoever is coming to this to this knowledge of the end of times, right? You don't have you, you cannot come to this, you know, with the attitude of thinking that oh, it's just something that's interesting, you know, something that any. I don't know if, how how people's attitude, uh, attitude is towards this knowledge, right? But like it's not something like you know, FYI, oh look, wow, you know, and then and then halas. No, no, right? It is as core as you studying your prayer, as core as you studying your fasting, as core as you studying the 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 attributes of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the sifat of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, as core as you studying akhlaq and good mannerisms and 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 the disease of the heart and so on and so forth. Right? It is as core as all of these components of our religion because and and basically you know it it and basically it um makes or breaks a person's religion in the end of time. Right? It becomes something that is daruri. It becomes something that is necessary. It is wajib right for us in our zaman to study it. Right? And this 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 non Right, it gives the one who, who studies this this fourth component, he becomes he places around himself, you know, like a um a, a protective uh force field <laughs> inshallah right? of knowledge of knowledge right protective force field of knowledge so you don't get easily duped right by the dajjal right the dajjal is actually a human being right and of course you know and and you find that as we go through this knowledge you will use the word dajjal and shaitan right together because they work together right so shaitan is basically the evil force right or iblis the evil force right but he is of the jinn species right the evil force right trying to delude us to destroy the human race altogether the dajjal is from the human beings right he's from the human species Right, so he's our species, like, and he, and of course, he works to destroy the human beings altogether. It's his job, right? So, and and they've both been existing for a long time. That just has been existing for a long time, right? Um, and that is a job, basically, right? So this knowledge, uh, it gives us, um, the, it gives okay, so this knowledge at end of times, it gives us the tools, the ability, right, to be able to tell where the evil lurks. Right, that is why it is a form of immunity, and that is why it has become essential, wajib, compulsory, right, in our zaman to study it. Right, so you don't fall into the guiles and the um, deception of the Dajjalic world, which many, in fact, ma the majority of human beings will fall into it, um, and only a very small minority will be able to break away. Very, very small minority will break away from it. And so, mashallah, may Allah. So, so this is why we have to place very high importance on this. Um, and I'll try my best, inshallah, not to cancel any classes anymore. Inshallah, I'll try my best. Um, um, if I have to, I'll shift it around. But but we'll try our very best that um that once a week we have these classes. So as I'm taking this material, um, I'm sharing it with you all immediately, yeah, directly. And it also helps me process it as well. Right. Today we had I had to move this timing to a different timing. I right? Because we had a session with Sazah Anissa, um, like the Malaysians had set it up, right, with the, the Malaysians. Um, and I just I just joined in. Um, it's supposed to be a Q&A, right? but today there was no queue, <laughs> but uh, no questions. Right? But Sazah Anissa just basically, um, you know, she gave like a brief any introduction overview of his entire knowledge. Like, and she went very and she she went quite deep into the story of Nabi Adam, Ali Islam, and Iblis, right? To go back to the beginning, right? To go back to the beginning, to the beginning of this war, like right, that will last till the day of judgment. Right. This is this is, this is a war. It's a war of that Iblis has waged against human beings, right? And in and with him is the Dajjal. Right? The Dajjal, Dajjal it works with Iblis, they work together, right, to destroy the human being. Okay, tamam. Let's go back to this verse, right? So um he says here another confirmation of these four components. Is found in the verse of Surah Al Jumaa, right? In Surah Al Jumaa, right? And he chose Surah Al Jumaa, even though there are many 
parts of the Quran that have that have similar verses. Like in Surah Baqarah, it appears twice. And in other parts of the Surah, appears, parts of the Quran, it appears also. But he chose Surah Jumu'ah because the Day of Judgment will happen on a Friday. Okay, Jumu'ah meaning Friday. Right, the Day of Judgment will happen on a Friday. Right, so it um, which is why we are to spend our Fridays in worship. I spend our Fridays in the ibadah. I know living in Western lands or living in, in non-Muslim lands that you don't get your Friday off, you know, unlike Muslim lands, so by Friday is off. And 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 you know what? Unfortunately, nowadays they don't in, in some Muslim lands they stop giving Fridays off. They actually stop doing that. You know, it's supposed to be that in all Muslim lands, Friday's off. <laughs> right? Because Friday is a day of worship. Right. But because they had so much, um, they had, they're having so many businesses from 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 the non-Muslim world. Right, that they have shifted their weekends, and, and it's happening in, in in parts of the Muslim world. Um, they have shifted their weekends. That was originally Thursday, Friday, or Friday, Saturday. They might now have pushed it to um Saturday, Sunday, right? Because the Christians want to go to the to, to church on Sunday, right? So they honor that and they make Friday a working day. And but Allahu Alam, Allahu Alam. You know what's going on with the Muslim world? Eh? Wala hawla, wala quwata, illa billah. Um, Allah knows best, right? Allah knows best what is going on with the Muslim world. But but as as with the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a hadith, um, Allahumma barik fi shamina wa, yaman, wa yamanina, O oh Allah, bless us in our Sham and in our Yemen. Right? Sham would include Palestine, Syria, Lebanon. Right? That is Sham, right? Um, and the Yemen is where Yemen is. Right? And, then he, and, then, and there was a man there, and the man said, Wa uh, najdina ya Rasulullah. Right. And then there's some uh, re repeated, Allahumma barik lana fi shamina wa yamanina. Oh Allah bless our sham and our Yemen. And the man said, well, najd ya Rasulullah, wa najd. Right. And then there's some responded, uh, 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 repeat again. And he said, Allahumma barik lana fi shamina wa yamanina. Oh Allah bless our sham and our Yemen. And the man said, wa najd ya Rasulullah, wa najd. Right, Najd is basically <laughs> the part of the Arabian Peninsula where you find the very tall buildings right now. Right, <laughs> that's, that's that's basically where the Najd is. Right, Najd is basically um not Syria, Palestine, not Yemen. Right, is the is the rich parts of Arabia. Right, where you see right now the very rich, rich, rich countries in Arabia, um, Dubai, Abu Dhabi. Um, you know, the Emirates is all where you find you find a nudged. He just he just nudged. And he, um <clears throat> right, so and then and so Rasulullah so after the third time, the man kept saying, Well, nudged, yeah, Rasulullah well, nudged, and make dua for the nudged. And there's something to the man, he said that it is from there that I see the two horns of shaitan emerging. Right. So the two horns of shaitan will emerge from the nudged. And this is one of the hadiths by subhanallah. In our zaman, you're looking at it. Right, and you're seeing where is the dunya. Basically, where you see dunya, that's where shaitan is. Right, full stop. Right, full stop. Where you see dunya, there is where shaitan has, um, and the jail has uh, built their palaces. Where you find dunya in its full, disgusting glory. Right, you 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 find shaitan and and, and the jail. They they they're just resting there. Right, and and where you find no dunya, and literally where you find people like really having no dunya. Right. Um. That is where you know you find the religion thriving, right? The 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 religion thriving in places where you find no dunya, you know. And so and and similarly, you know, it is it is on the outwards on the inward as well, right? If you want, if if your heart is 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 built on dunya, 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 all built in your heart, then you'll find shaitan and dajjal, you know, um, establishing the thrones in your heart. Right? But if you make your heart devoid of dunya, remove all dunya from your heart, and right? make it like a, make make it so you know uh, empty of dunya, like how you see Palestine empty of dunya, right? You see the Yemen empty of dunya. It's literally empty of dunya, right? Um, Subhanallah, you know the, the luxuries are not here. They're not in these lands, right? Look at Syria. The luxuries are not in these lands. Um, um, that is when you will find the religion um, taking root in your heart. When you remove from your heart obsession right, with material things, right? and mashallah, this is the this is the war of shaitan, right? That he will use the material, that right? he will use the um, he will use money. That is that is that is his goal, right? Um, <clears throat> when 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 it, it is said that. When human beings first invented the gold and the silver coin, 
it is said in one of the in, in it is said Allahu alam this is in the khabar yani um it is said that uh, iblis when when the human beings first meet you know, the gold and the silver coin iblis uh, looked at it right? and then he placed the coins on his eyes like his beloved yeah, like his beloved right? he placed the gold and the silver coins on his eyes and then he squealed in glee right? in the, in the riwayat like he squealed in glee so it's so disgusting, ya Allah. <laughs> I think imagine Iblis doing that. Eh? He, he squealed in glee, the happiness, right? And he said that once, that he said that 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 now I have these, I have no need for idols anymore, right? Now I have these, right? The gold and the silver, right? I have no need for idols anymore. Basically, money, right? money, dunya, things. That is where people find, yeah. Uh, people have their people, human beings have their the downfall, and the jail is um is all about that. Right, Nabi Isa is nothing about that. Right, and the sooner we get these, you know, things out of our hearts, right, the 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 sooner we do that, right, the easier it is to for us to follow the way of Nabi Isa, the way of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the easier it is for us to pull away from the clutches of the jail. But for as long as we want our luxury, we want our five star hotels, we want our our air conditioning, we want our our latest gadgets, we want our latest iPhone, we want our we want we want we want we want right up at the expense of so much poverty going on in the world, right as we see it, right there. There's going to be a day, a day of judgment where you have to answer for every single one of these things and be prepared. If you are prepared to answer for it, then go ahead. If you're not prepared to answer for it, then stop. Yeah. So here, um, in Surah Jumaah, Surah Jumaah happens on um the day of the day of judgment happens on a Friday. Right. So he says here, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Who is the one who sent the messengers to the people of them, who will teach them and teach them the book and the wisdom and the wisdom? And if they were before, they were in darkness." Right. So he says here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says um, in the Quran, and he, and he, Allah, is the one who has raised amongst an unlettered people, an ummiyin, right? people who are unlettered, um, a rasulah minhum, right? a prophet from amongst themselves. So he is the one who has sent amongst the unlettered people a messenger from amongst themselves. I wonder why the English didn't follow the Arabic in its diagram. The diagram is so nice. <laughs> is it at the bottom or is it not? The English. The Arabic draws nicely. The, the, it breaks up the eye and gets it next to the eye. But the English puts the whole thing in one go. Right. You can do it the way the Arabic does it. You can see how it's, it's done. Right. It has like, he drew, he drew a diagram and he Drew next, he wrote next to every ayat, um, the the interpretation, you know, subhanallah, is 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 more visual, and he, the way you can understand it is very visual. Tamam. Alright. So anyway, um, so the first part he says here, alright, yet slu alaihi ayatihi. Okay, that's 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 the first the first section of the ayat. Alright. So basically, after Allah says, Allah has sent a prophet from amongst them. So now Allah informs us of the things. That these that this prophet came with. So the first thing this prophet came with is Yatslu alayhim ayatihi. Okay, in English it translates to be he recites to them his signs. Right, the word ayat right can mean verses, can mean signs. Right. Okay. So in the past, right, it has always been understood. It, it has always been understood that this means verses. Right, because Yatslu. Uh, yatslu meaning recite. Right? So with the word yatslu, like tilawa, you might think that, okay, that, that goes with ayat. So the ayat has two meanings. It has the meaning of um sign. It has the meaning of verses. So since it's recitation, you know, it, um, it has been taken in a past right, to mean um verses. However, Habib uh, points out that the Quran, the teaching of the Quran is mentioned later on in the verse. So therefore, the first word ayat does not actually point to verses, but it actually means signs. Because the word ayat has two meanings. Okay, write, write it down. The word ayat has two meanings. It means signs or it means verses. Okay, it could mean sign, it could mean verses. 
Previously, it was taken to be mean to, to mean verses because of the word yetzlu, uh, yetzlu meaning to recite. But if you look into the, in, if you look later on in the in the same verse, the same same verse, right, you find that the the Quran is already being mentioned, and 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 there is, there is no verse in this in the entire Quran, right, whereby um there is something redundant, I right, mentioned in the you know in 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 the same verse, right, you won't find redundancy at all in the Quran. So it is already mentioned uh, if you. Look a bit below you are limuhumul kitab right what you are limuhumul kitab is already there right and and Allah is the one who teaches he teaches them the book so if that is already there no, no it's not, not Allah in the sense uh the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam refers to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you are limuhumul kitab and he the prophet Right, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam teaches them right um the book, the Quran. So if that's already mentioned in this part of the ayat, you are kitab, this means that yes, alayhim ayatihi, right, does not refer to the Quran. Uh, does not refer to the Quran. Right? Because the Quran is mentioned later. You get it? You get it? Eh? So the, the first part, right? Um, when it says yes, alayhim ayatihi, so how it says the word ayat here refers to signs, right? Not to verses, but to signs. And if you look at the Arabic next to it, it says al ilmu bi alamat saa wa tahu wa tahulati al umam. Right? So the knowledge of the signs, as a GNS, of the signs of the hour and um the changes. Uh, the changes that are there, the changes in the um in 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 the umam, like in the uh in the different nations that will come right from time time to time to time. You see that? So the first part of the verse is the fourth rukun. Uh, the first part of the verse refers to the fourth rukun. See that? Okay, then this the verse goes on. Yuzaki him. Yuzaki him is always about ihsan, like ilm al ihsan. Yuzaki him and means purify them. Is a key meaning purify them where you are limuhum will kita right and teaches them the book. Well, a hikma the hikma will remain will refer to the sunnah of Rasulullah. So, you see, these three things you say, key him, you are limuhum will kita, but well, hikma, these three you have Islam, Iman, and Ihsan. See that right? Islam, Iman, and Ihsan is in these in these three, right? You are limuhum kita, well, hikma that has. Um, Islam and Iman in it, right? It is it is mixed, right? Because Islam and Iman comes from Quran and Sunnah, right? You Zakihim specifically highlighted um to show Ihsan, right? While Ihsan is also found in the Sunnah and the, the Kitab, right? In and the Quran, Ihsan is found there as well. But you Zakihim to highlight Ihsan because Ihsan is the first to go, right? Ihsan is the most Difficult thing for people to attain, right? Um, as yes, you mentioned earlier on, so you can see the diagram, right? So you zakim you have next to you have ilmul ihsan, tamam, and then below it you have you alimul kitab, and you have kitabullah al Quran, tamam. Then you go a bit down, you have al wal hikma al sunnatu nabawiya. Okay, then you see a bracket next to it. Ulum al aqida wa sharia wa maratib al suluk, right? So aqida iman. Sharia Islam Maratib al Suluk Ihsan. Okay, Suluk basically means akhlaq. Tamam? So he gave a diagram there to show these three, like form the first three pillars of the religion Islam, Iman, Ihsan. <coughs> and the first thing mentioned earlier on, right, um, when he said, uh, when Allah said, Yatslu alayhim ayatihi, that refers to al bil alamat sa'a. Get it? I so the first part refers to um the signs of the, of the last day. I so here he brings a proof from the Quran. I there are actually four components mentioned in the Quran and not three. Tamam. Right. So uh nah. right and then so and then Allah ends off the ayat by saying that um uh wa inka no min qablula fi dalali mubin. Right. And so here he gives the the the, the tafsir of these verses. وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ and, and even if they were from before, um, بِنْ عِدَام uh, بِنْ عِدَامِ هَذَا الْعِلْمِ لَفِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ ضَلَالٍ وَاضِحٍ Right, so uh, even though from before, they were in clear misguidance. Of course, this brings many different, um, you know, understandings of this but last part of the verse. That it could be, you know, misguidance out of uh, not knowing Islam, not knowing, not knowing Iman, not knowing Ihsan, and now including into it, not knowing the um, signs of the end of time, right? So many people in our zaman, many people, unfortunately, even those who are, um, you know, preaching the religion, 
learn the religion, right? They have not learned science at the end of times. And what they end up doing is they end up preaching what the jail right, has spread in the world and they end up teaching that not realizing they are being, you know, assistances, or uh, they're, they're being assistance, uh, assistance, right, to, assistance. they're being assistance to, to, to Dajjal, to Shaitan, not realizing they're actually being that. Subhanallah, wala hawla, wala quwata, illa billah. Because they have not learned this knowledge. Right? They have not learned this knowledge. Let me just read Arabic, let me just read the, the English true, okay? So in the verse, recites to them his science, refers to the science of the science of the last day and changes in the history of nations. Tamam. Purifies right, them, refers to the science of ihsan or excellence of faith. So I hope you all can write in your own notebooks. Right? Do the diagram that is done in the Arabic book. I like it more. It's clearer. I right, am doing that way, then, then as opposed to doing it in one um, paragraph like this. It right, teaches them the book and the wisdom, refers to the Quran, refers to the knowledge of the Quran and the Sunnah, which in addition to the science of science of Ihsan, formulate the triangle of law, creed, and spirituality. Right, so law meaning Islam, right, or Sharia, right, creed meaning um, Iman, right, or Aqeedah, and spirituality meaning Ihsan, right, or Suluk, right, Akhlaq. Right, without understanding these four, they will be in complete and clear misguidance as the verse concludes. Right? The verse says, you know, and they were they were before learning all of these four, right? You have to learn all four, right, to be protected from misguidance. If you do three without learning the last one, right, you are still subject, still um, exposed to misguidance right, that, that is going on in the world, mashallah. Okay, understand? Is there any questions on that part? Okay, I'm going to continue, okay? <laughs> right, any questions? No questions. No. Let's continue. Um, okay, so the next, the next uh, lesson, Darsani, right, Wihatul Mawdu'iyya, wa Wihatul Shara'iyya, li Hadith Jibreel. Right, so here, the thematic and the religious unity in Hadith Jibreel. Okay, so I hope you all know by now what is Hadith Jibreel. Okay, <laughs> I hope you know by now what is Hadith Jibreel. What is Hadith Jibreel? Hadith Jibril is the hadith whereby the man appears. Saying Omar narrates that a man in very white clothes, right? Um, in very with very black hair, um, very white clothes, very black hair. Uh, uh comes to uh the masjid. He appears in the masjid, right? And he asks Rasulullah some questions. Right? He asks Ya Muhammad, tell me about Islam. Tell me about Islam. Tell me about Iman. Tell me about Ihsan. And then he says, tell me about the hour. And then he says, tell me about its signs. Right, that is called Hadith Jibril. Tamam, that's all called Hadith. Um, that is called Hadith Jibril. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us understanding. It's in Surah Jum'ah. You can find it in Surah Jum'ah. It's, it's Surah Jum'ah is a short surah. <laughs> you, can, you can search it up. Is there? In Surah Jum'ah. It's a short surah. Let's open it up. You can find it. Tamam. Um, Naam. Right. Uh, so, so, um, Naam. Okay, the other question has the diagram. Eh? Alhamdulillah. Okay, so we had we had the mawdu'iya. So what it means here is that so here it says you have to be with the mawdu'iya. اجتمال الحديث في نصه النبوي على أربعة مواضيع مجتمعة يتبع بعضها بعضا. So in English it says thematic unity. Right, so thematic here meaning that um uh thematic yes and also in the same majlis refers to the fact that the hadith contains four topics which follow each other in a unified sequence, unity which has neither been negated by a text nor a statement declaring they are separate. So meaning like again he is um you know he's still he's still you know pushing forward the um the the realization that there are four components of the religion and not three right uh, in saying that the hadith all came in one go. Right, the hadith came in one go, right. and there is no, there is no reason, right, no indication, nothing to tell us that the last question of Sayyidina Jibril alayhi salam, right, is to be separated from the first three questions, right, that was um uh that, that was that was asked by Sayyidina Jibril alayhi salam. There is no reason for separation. So in understanding this, now we come to another understanding. And what is our, our second understanding? The second understanding is that, that if you understand that the signs of the end of times 
is as core in our religion as the science of aqidah and the science of fiqh, you know, of jurisprudence and law, and the science of akhlaq, you know, ihsan, then it is incumbent upon us, you know, it's compulsory upon us as Muslims, right, to give this last component as equal treatment as we have given the previous three components in that, right? First and foremost, the scholars, right, have to, you know, go deep into this last rukun and to start to formulate it and to power and to portion it into different groups, you know, different sections for it to be easily studied by the masses, right? And 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 in doing that, now it is upon the masses, right, upon the, the awam, right, the, the common Muslim, to now learn the science. It becomes compulsory, right, to learn the science as how it is compulsory on every Muslim to learn the science of um of 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 iman to learn aqidah is wajib is wajib on all Muslims to learn what is what is our aqidah. It is wajib and wajib on all Muslims to learn um our Sharia, and to learn what we need right to survive this world in our Sharia, in our in our prayers, in our fasting, in our in our charity and so on. Right, and it is compulsory for us to learn right uh, what is suluk and it says what is akhlaq, what is good character, what what are deeds of the heart, and right? what destroys the person from within, what is hasad, what is jealousy, what is arrogance, what is riya, what is showing off. We need to know all of these things. It is wajib, eh? Wajib. Right, um, for people to know this, okay. So see, see what, how this goes, right? So that so now this hadith points us or tells us that just as how you have studied Islam, Iman, Ihsan, or Ummah of the Prophet, Islam, right? It is it is compulsory on you to learn this fourth component, and if you fail to do so, your first three are at stake. Right, the first three components will be at stake if you fail to give the fourth component is due in its study, right, and in its understanding, in spending time in it. Right, but subhanallah, we are in a zaman whereby even the first three are neglected. And we're not even saying, you know, the people, you know, who have like studied fiqh well and studied in you know, aqidah well and studied, studied akhlaq well and practicing all of these three well, you know, we're, we're speaking to, to us, all of us, you know, our, our zaman, our nation, our people, we are, we are failing in our aqidah, we're failing in our fiqh, we're failing in our akhlaq. We're feeling the first three, right? And while we're feeling in, the, in learning the first three, the first place, right? We, you know, we have not even learned how to protect what weak, we have of the first three, you know, when, when it protects what is not even strong. SubhanAllah, Ya Allah. May Allah have mercy on us, Ya Allah. You know where we're at. Tamam. So you understand what's going on here, okay? So religious unity means that the four topics together discuss the knowledge of the components of the religion in such a, method, in such a manner that indicate the support for one another. Right? Rasulullah Sallam referred to this unity when he said to teach you the foundations of religion and you alimukum amra dinikum. You alimukum amra dinikum. He said this. Like, he pointed the fact right, that um that the, that this all of this um uh, comes together right as the as the methods of religion وكمان مشي عند تربية ويقصد بالوحدة الشرعية كون المواضيع الأربعة مجتمعة ااا تخص العلم بأركان الدين في وحدة الشرعية ااا متداخلة يع ااا يعضد ااا بعضها بعضا right so they 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 come together and they support um and they support um each other together that all four components are necessary for someone to survive this dunya this world right it's necessary for us we must strengthen all four all four right and that is why it is <clears throat> it is you know i don't know what, I don't know what, what to use, but mind-boggling, I don't know, mind-boggling or baffling, how people can find time to do anything else? Like how can you find, how can people find time to waste? Like, really, subhanAllah, I, I, I'm wondering, I'm literally wondering, how do people find time to waste? You know, you have all these things that's compulsory on you to learn and to practice. And then on top of it, your responsibilities as a human being, if your parents, your family, your children, your, your spouse, your work, your job, your, you know, your earnings and so on. Right, how in the world do people find time to watch TV? 
you know, watch Netflix and watch and watch, you know, rubbish. I don't know. And seriously, seriously, Subhanallah. And you 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 wonder, you know, and definitely if someone has time to waste, definitely a hundred percent you are neglectful or something. Right? You are a hundred percent neglectful or something if you can find time to waste. 100%. There is no way around this. Because time is so short. There is so little time on this dunya. Now, if you have time to waste, you, you are neglectful. You are definitely neglectful of one or, or some of the matters that are compulsory on you, be it in your family or your children or your spouse or your or your religion or studying the religion or practicing religion. Right, basically. Nam, right. So it is that. Uh, nam, right. So it is the so Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right. He um concludes the entire hadith by saying, and and it is the statement of Rasulullah that tells us that whatever was mentioned in the hadith, right, refers to religion. That means all components of the religion. وَكَمَا أَطْلَقَ عَلَيْهِ عَلَمَاءُ الْأُسُورِ مُشْتِعًا بِحَرِيثِ أُمُّسْنَةِ Right, so, um, and it's called usul, right? Usul meaning the, meaning the foundations of this religion, right? You call these four topics together, right? The, um, the mother of the sunnah, Ummu Sunnah, or here he says the fountain of the sunnah. Basically, it is the summary of his entire religion. وَقَدِ اعْتَبَرَ رُبَعِيَّةَ مَوَضِيعِ الدِّينِ الْإِمَامِ الْبُخَارِ عندما عن إنما عنوانا ااا لحديث جبريل وسمى الساعة علما بقوله باب سؤال جبريل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عن الإيمان والإسلام والإحسان وعلم الساعة وبيان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم له تمام رأي سو سو um here he mentions that there are of the scholars, the ulama of the past, right? for example, Imam Al Bukhari, right? Um, that when he wrote the topic, the title for this hadith in his in his in his Sahih, right, he actually called the chapter right for this hadith a chapter on the questions of Angel Jibril, right, to the Prophet وسلم, regarding Iman, Islam, Ihsan, and the science of the last hour. And the prophetic response. He actually named the topic that uh, he 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 did not leave out the fourth part. He actually Imam Bukhari actually wrote down all four, right? Um, identifying that there were actually four components, right, in the um um in 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 the hadith, right? And so Maqal Jaa Jibrilu alayhi salam, um, yu'alimukum dinakum. Right, and then the Rasul and 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 he, Imam Ghazali actually mentions. Sorry, I'm not Imam Imam Bukhari. Imam Bukhari actually mentions that Rasul responded by saying that Jibril, um, after him saying that Jibril came to teach your religion, including all of them in the religion. Wa fi tarajim sahih Muslim alati um adafa hal ulama bab babu bayan al iman wal islam wal ihsan wa asharat al sa'a ay so ibn ibn muslim ibn muslim also had a chapter whereby he calls the chapter right um a uh, chapter explaining iman islam ihsan and the signs of the hour right so it's not something new see imam, imam uh, al habib al qayani he's showing us it's not something new at all right? it is not something new at all um uh it has been mentioned by the scholars for for four generations right but it's just that <laughs> Allah alam but it's just that maybe for the masses right for the awam for the common muslim um we have not come around to studying it right so you don't blame our scholars right on how come we are so blur about this how we are so we're unaware of this right but We've not come around studying it. We've never come around studying our the first three properly, right? So Subhanallah, right? And and of course, you know, it's, it's like you see, it's like like a vicious like a vicious cycle, right? Because it is of the end of times that knowledge is destroyed, right? It is of the end of times that knowledge is destroyed, right? And so that knowledge is destroyed leads to people neglecting studying the religion, and people neglecting studying the religion leads to them being even more destroyed in their knowledge and leads to them not caring to send their children to study religion. And then this goes in the visual cycle whereby you end up having people who have completely no knowledge of the religion and not even knowing that they have to know about the religion. You see that? Right? So you're trying to break that cycle. 
right? Basically, to get and bring people back, like, and to and to highlight to them, right, the importance of studying this religion. Okay, tamam. Okay, alhamdulillah. So today we actually finished the entire chapter. Um, there I have a lot of commentary on this chapter actually, right? But it is all coming up anyway in the upcoming chapters. I have a lot of commentary on this chapter, right? But it is coming up anyway, right? Um, in the upcoming chapters. So I don't want to spend so much time here. Um, I want to actually answer one of the questions that was posted on the Telegram, um, group. I think there were a few questions that were asked. They were asked previously right so on the fake the heart the telegram group someone actually asked the question about regarding regarding staying in non-muslim lands and go and running away um to muslim lands and i actually had this question a few times um from different people right? and i asked you asked our teachers about it as well right because of course you know it, um uh, I would call the head switch Javier Amar. Right, they be mentioning about people, you know, moving to Muslim lands if they are able to. But the first thing first is that his first his first question whenever anybody wants to move, you know, overseas is that he will always ask them about their parents because your parents is your first your first duty, regardless if your parents are Muslim or non Muslim, right? Um, your parents are your first duty. I have a duty towards your parents, right? So if your parents are looked after. Right, in some way or form, if you can ensure that they are okay and looked after, right, then you can you can you know seek a way, right. But you know the thing about it is that as Muslims, right, we are looking into the akhirah, right. So we 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 have an akhirah point of view, right. It is very important to understand the akhirah point of view. I, you know, subhanallah, like just me from myself here in Darim. You know, and I know since I was here um ten years ago, I was here twenty thirteen. Uh, every single day, your mind is with your people. I I don't I don't go a single day, whereby I'm not thinking about my family back home and wondering how they are. And and I want to study to go home, for me right now, because I have no kids. You know, I don't have to think about, about that. Right, but but I want to study to go home. You know. As much as I love Tareem, it's Isha here already. Uh, how long I got to eat? Allah, Akbar, Allah, Akbar. Allah Alhamdulillah. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Um, now, nah, so I was just saying, now, nah, um, mashallah, you know, um, as much as you want to run away from the dunya, the thing is that we have responsibility. So if you do have family that's not practicing, family that's not Muslim, any, you know, you want to do your da'wah there, 
right? You want to do da'wah there. Um, because at the end of the day, it is an akhirah worldview. It's an akhirah worldview, right? And, you know, I, like, I'm not here to run away. If you think I'm here to run away, I'm not here to run away. I'm not. I'm here to go back, right? But to get the knowledge that I, inshallah, can get and to go back, right? Um, you know, to to share and to spread the knowledge of, of, of this, this team. <clears throat> there was what Prophet Sallam was, right? That he did not stay in the cave, then run away, right? But he went to the people and he exposed himself, right? And he strove and he fought, you know, and this was just to spread the knowledge and the, and the, and the guidance of his religion, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Any so it is the it is it is a balance, right, as well, because you know you, you want to protect your children, right, from the influences of the Zaman, right? And 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 protect them, protect them. You can protect them even in Singapore. You can. You can. I know many people who do it. You can. It's not impossible. You can. It can it can be that, right? Do your aura, do your readings, do your zikr and so on. It can, it can be that. Any right, so I don't know. Like, like for me, if I had, you know, family who, like, or especially, especially if your own parents were not Muslim, like, I think it'd be very difficult, like, to be living apart from them, trying to influence them. Any, you know, I know someone here in Tarim whereby this person she has family members, direct, direct, direct family members, in Singapore, you know, who are very, very, very wayward. You know, and she wants to influence them, but it's very hard to influence when you're all the way here. And right? it's any think about it. Think about it. Right? But of course, the I mean, I know, I know, like, um, it is not a one answer all for all, but it is a case by case situation. So you're gonna see what your responsibilities are. I right? place responsibilities first, and always understand that Allah is the one that protects. Right? Allah is all that protects. Don't think that running away to a Muslim land, you've run away from the fitna. Ever. <laughs> Ever. Right? You have not run away from anything. Um, when you run to a Muslim land. Um, literally, like literally, I'll tell you that. Right? People have come with Tareem and they bring their Xboxes and they bring their PS, the PS what? PS4 now, I know, PS5, I don't know. Right? They bring their they bring their, their they bring entire, you know, what do you call this? What's that thing called? Sound system. Right? They bring a whole load of Korean dramas in their laptops. Literally, you know, you you is you. It's just you. You could be in Singapore and you could be living the most prophetic lifestyle. And you could be in, you know, Tarim or Mecca, Medina, and be the in the most dunya we lifestyle. Right? It's you. It's just you. You know, you're gonna decide what you're gonna do with your time. And how you gonna leave your family? Leave your family, you know. So Allah, Subhanallah, you know, Mashallah. So anyway, um, um, and there was another question also I wanted to, to address about the AI, right? So again, with the AI, right? Um, it is new. Okay, it is new. I did ask my teacher about it about the AI, right? It's like it's very new. And the thing about what is new is that you don't know what Dajjal has up his sleeves. So what I can imagine of the AI, and I'm not blaming any of these apps, okay? Because I know that the, those who developed the apps, they are probably, you know, righteous Muslims who want the best for people, right? Um, and this is what it is, right? The Dajjalic world right, or the modern world has a lot of tools that we as Muslims, we use it, we try to make it, we try to use it for for goodness, you know, try to make use of these tools for goodness. Like right now, you know, the internet, Zoom, you know, um, YouTube and so on, it is made by a disbelievers, by, by the by the by the by the kafir, and, and there's a lot of evil in there. But we're using it for goodness. We're trying to, you know, use it for goodness. Right. But AI, right, um, for me, I have my high, high suspicions on AI. Um, because because of it, you know, of course, the word the intelligence there, right, is highly suspicious because in Islam, knowledge has always been transmitted through hearts that have taqwa, right? That is how knowledge is transmitted 
from a heart that has taqwa, that has fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Thiqah, in Arabic you say thiqah, right? Rajul thiqah, right? somebody who is trustworthy, credible, right? To a heart that has taqwa, right? So while AI has ilm, has knowledge, right? AI has knowledge in it, you will not see it has taqwa. Right, it does not have taqwa, it does have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in it. Right, so you say, okay, fine, I use my AI and I have a teacher next to me. Right, so so that the Quran app, right, I know the one that the question that was on the Quran app. So you say, I use my Quran app, I recite on this, if I don't have a teacher around with me, I right? and, and then well, like once or twice a week, I go to a teacher and I recite with my teacher. Right, and then so is it okay? Right, Allah A'lam, the answer is Allah A'lam. Right, because you don't know what is AI exactly, but what I can see as a possible direction that AI might bring us is that even if you, right, in yourself, that you use AI and then you use this app and then you use, you have a teacher, a physical teacher that you go to, what I'm seeing in the future is that there will come a generation that will stop going to teachers because they have AI. I'm seeing, I'm seeing that possibility. I, I'm seeing that possibly happening and if I, I'm sure many of you now can see it, that can possibly, possibly, very possibly happen in our ummah. That a few years on the road, people stop going to Asatidah, they stop going to the ulama because they have AI. So right now, maybe in our generation, right now where we're at, maybe we use it as a, like a, like a, like a, you know, um, um, like a like, like a substitute when we can't find a teacher, right? Or she's just not able available for us at that point in time. So we read the AI, our Quran, and then we go once we transit to a teacher. Fine for us, right? But I can see um in the passage of time, I can see in the future, right, that people will just drop the teacher. And that will be calamity in the knowledge. You know, um, this uh, the knowledge, um, um, inheritance of Islam, right? If teachers are dropped, right? Because knowledge is not lines in the book, but knowledge is a light in the heart, as Imam Shafi'i said. Right? And knowledge, it is taqwa. It goes through the hearts of those who have taqwa, right? They have fear of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. They don't say, you know, whatever they want to say. Right, so that's one thing I'm seeing that AI can lead us to, and you can sure many of you here can see that that is highly probable. That is highly, highly probable as human beings get more and more busy with their lifestyles, right? And and they just want to just go and just use uh and just use a device, right, to teach it because right? they don't want to use a teacher. They just want to teach them, right? And and also to to carry on to this point. Right, is that you don't even know now without a teacher, you don't know, right, if they begin these people who invented all of these things, like right, even if the one who, who who developed this entire you know app, they are Muslims and they have very good intentions, right? Mashallah, may Allah reward them. Right, but the the you see the entire technology behind it, right? The whole technology, you know, let me share with you one thing. When you learn fake the right? You learn that technology comes from shaitan. I'm not making it up. Right? It's subhanAllah. You know, technology comes from shaitan. They all know that. I don't know you all know that. Right? But technology comes from shaitan. You see, shaitan has abilities, you know, the jinn, the jinn. They have abilities that you see te technology bring us to. Don't you see that? Right? Technology basically has brought human beings to imitate jinn. If you think about it. Allows us to fly far distances. Allows us to, you know, look into people's homes. Right? Allows us to, you know, it, it's literally, <laughs> if you think about it. But but it is one of the things that we learn in Fikta Hawlat that um, technology is from the inspiration of jinn, right? It is their inspiration. They, they teach human beings how to be more like them and to have the so-called powers or the abilities of them, right? Um, technically, now, nah, right? D did you think, right? I mean, I mean, for all of us, we are using Wi-Fi right now. We're using we have we have, we know we can, we believe, right? We believe that it comes to us through signals from a satellite, 
I'm an engineer myself, right? So, so we this is what we are, we are, we really believe, right? We believe that it comes to us, the signals through the satellite, and then it appears on our phone, and we can see people, right? You can see images, you can see human beings in real time. Don't you think there's something <laughs> supernatural about it? <laughs> or we being, you know, not 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 allowing ourselves to, to go that way. I don't know what to think about it. Right, but but you know, it is a there's a level of supernatural any nature from the nature of any of the supernatural in there. Think of our technology right now, right? Just think about it. We can literally do so many things that you know it <laughs> mashallah. <laughs> Yeah, right. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. And you know, it's like in another dimension. You know, have we, have we, you know, un, un, real without, without realizing it entered into the jinn world without even realizing it. Allah Allah. So anyway, what I'm saying is that the AI is technology, and even you know, and 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 those who are developing all these apps, right? They is using the technology that is already developed by these, you know, like non Muslims. So. I wouldn't be surprised down the road that right now it might seem like a good thing. Right now it might seem, you know, beneficial. Right now it might seem, you know, um, you know, positive. And that's how Dajjal works. I won't be surprised that in the future they're going to mess things up and they're going to insert, right, bit by bit um, into the Quran, into the Hadith, into our religion. They're going to insert stuff that are, that is just going to be so out. It's going to be so wrong in our religion, right? But is this going to be done in that way? So you can see how the stripping happens. I right? first remove teachers from them, no teachers, right? Then, ah, uh, that's now we begin to inject, you know, lies into the religion, and 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 lies get injected. So for me, I'm I'm on a, I'm on a very high, you know, I'm I'm highly wary of this entire AI. Um, introduction. I'm highly, highly wary about it. I don't trust it at all, <laughs> at all. Um, Allahu alam how this will play out. You don't know. This thing, but Dajjal, you don't know what he's up to. You don't know, right? But but we ask Allah to show us truth as truth, and allow us to follow it, and show us evil as evil, and allow us to stay away from it, and to give in us this sense of knowing to walk the other way. For right now, my sense is that I am not getting involved with AI. For me, with regards to religion, if I want to use it to, you know, check my essay, <laughs> go ahead, <laughs> right? Um, but <laughs> but with regards to the religion, no, no, I will not let AI touch the religion. That only comes from Sheikh. It only comes from Sheikh. Right through a senate to our Prophet Wasallam, and that's how it has been for generations. We will we will not be the generation to, to change that. We will not be the one to change that. All right. So for me, I I I'm not gonna budge on this. <laughs> right. Um knowledge is through Senate full stop. Through Senate full stop. Right. Uh I you can use AI for other stuff <laughs> like your your homework or something like that I don't know right but not not the dean right the dean is too precious to use AI Allah Alam Allah Alam I'm not saying it's haram just in, just just the view tamam okay let's stop there for today inshallah wa sallallahu ala sallallahu ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahabihi wa sallam alhamdulillah rabbil alamin al fatiha anna allaha yusuna manafi anu amalin khas bin wadilla hudawi sallam bin wasallam sallam wa rahimah amina I'm a shaykh, you know, is that we have to go in the house. That's not fair. Sunna Rahman Rahim, when I asked her. Swanak Allahumma Biham Kashana, I know him and test of the good to the day. Was it Allah? Is it in the Muhammad? السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته